Welcome to the Bold Analysis, ladies and gentlemen. Joshua Miguna Miguna, Wood Magina, is back in the country. I mean the son of Magina. Is back in the country. At 6 a.m., he arrived at JKA and was received by journalists and to be specific, close family members. Mubuna was welcomed at the airport, uh, and after that, it was uh, revealed by the brother that he was to have a meeting with, Pre with William Ruto, President William Ruto in State House. Then after that, uh, he headed directly to the Mashuja Day celebrations. Let me make it very open, open secret, that Miguna's date of return was changed by the State House operatives who handed him over his new passport in Canada. And they were keen to use him as the emblem of third generational generation heroes to underscore other heroes of this country. And keen to the architecture of of this event, the people that organized this event, he, they wanted that, they know very well that Mugune resonated with the youth, and they would make that Mashuja Day celebration. Actually, Mugune Miguna's presence would actually overshadow any other conversation about our heroes. Because um, the truth of the matter here is, you cannot celebrate our heroes with a lot of truth well without mentioning the people that really fought for this country. The freedom that we enjoy, even the freedom of doing what we do in these media spaces, the freedom that both Miguna, William Ruto, and all the people in this country are actually enjoying the people that fought for those things are the second generation, uh, the second liberation team, where Elo Dinga was part of it. And of course, you cannot talk about heroes without talking about our elders, like Koigi Umwere. Talking about Railo Dinga. Talking about people that fought for this country. And Mashujade celebration cannot be reduced to a Miguna Miguna affair. But that probably was one of the things that was intended by making sure that coincidentally Miguna Miguna will return on the day that Kenyans are celebrating the heroes. Miguna went through unfortunate uh, fate in 2018 when he was deported back to Canada. And I don't know whether I want to say it was political detainee or political depo deportation. And then four years he's back in the country. Of course, what Miguna went through is not something that you wish for even your enemy. Government officials, I made this observation, even though they were so keen on arrival on Miguna and the fact that the Kenya Kwanzaa government really wants to take credit for Mguna Mguna's return, there was no government official who was at the airport. To Sidangayane, there was no government official, none from the immigration department, none from even the interior, none from state house. And from the airport, one thing I believe is if you follow the, if you watch that press briefing at the airport, he was lonely by that Duncan Ching, that Professor Duncan Ching. You know, he's, he's a man who's not been so much friendly in the cameras. So these are people that close family members, journalists were interested in it and, and everything. And the speech at the airport was short, brief, and not high octane. Someone was expecting that immediately Muguna arrives here, maybe he's going to start talking to us about the despot. Now the story is different, guys. 
it was easy and comfortable to abuse Raila and abuse Uhuru when you are in Canada. But back home, that's not the take. Because if Miguna continues with the runs against the president, uh, the former president and the former prime minister, then he's going to lose the relevance of the media. No one is going to cover the abuses, the dashboards and all that. And we look at this in a very clear manner. Why do you think that the government officials stepped away? Even though it tell quite understand. If someone was to be escorted to State House, already there he was going to meet the president. Why would government not send some officials to receive him? Because they, even judiciary, judiciary is, is been happy that because what facilitated the Miguna Miguna's return is obeying the court orders that had been issued since 2018 to facilitate the return of Miguna Miguna. Then he was also he also dropped the revolution narrative and slogans he was embracing when he was in Canada. At the time he was leaving, Miguna was leaving as the General, is it Secretary General, General of Self Proclaimed National Resistance Movement, NRM. <laughs> so when he's come back, I think he's also dropped the Viva. And you know, that, that, Anaka Metulia taking a humble pie. So, what exactly is in store? And I want to explain for you what has emerged and what exactly will play out the presence of Miguna Miguna moving forward. Kindly subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell, and like our video. Those who are watching us, uh, we are also just two days to the end of our, we are actually finishing the fundraiser on Saturday, today's 20th, 50 shillings donation to purchase a camera. The budget is only less by 20,000, and of course the number is up there, so we are still reaching out to you in a special way, 0710 62 So on Saturday... We believe that um, it will come. We shall complete this. He's been advised to drop, also dropped that narrative. And I want to tell you something. Miguna Miguna will have to take cover in Ruto's government. He will have to take that risk and embrace Ruto's government fast. Remember when he was away at one point during in his tweets, he was so vocal on some issues. But this is not right, this is not wrong. But the person of Miguna is a man who will not want to be close to you. You don't want to, him to be your enemy, you don't want to run him to be so close to you. But you'll have to sit around William Ruto's government. And that's what I saw even in his speech. He was so much appreciative of President of William Ruto. And of course, it's, it's in order. Because I think Ruto facilitated his comeback. Then, even though that is a very big risk because he's probably going to lose his position as people's defender. When you are with government, you automatically lose your contact with the people. So, with that, probably somewhere, because government raises and work out. When something went wrong and you're not so comfortable about things, you can easily walk out. Then, magnanimously walk out in protest and chart a specific path as himself. But the political suicide is go Ruto, support Ruto, but after supporting Ruto, now again start abusing Raila. In fact, when you're back here, you know, here, you'll have to attend events in Mombasa, in Nairobi, in Kisumu, in other places. You must have an element of restraint. The time to abuse Raila is over. The time to call former President Uhuru Kenyatta all sorts of names is over. Because we're in this country. This country is for both of us. <laughs> and if you want to get the reception somewhere, of course you have to. And you have you must have an element of restraint. Now, um, most likely, I can tell you, Miguna Miguna will be avoided by William Ruto's handlers. 
He is going to be avoided. And I want to tell you why. In his press briefings, you know, something that we're going to... And at the airport, he was so specific that uh, he's going to spill more beans and speak more about what he went through in, uh, in Canada or in the hands of the uh, former regime led by pre former President Uhuru Kenyatta. Lest he is forgetting that by the time he was going all through this, the current president was a deputy president. And in fact, there was no handshake by then. That's the truth. William Ruto was, and there was no handshake when Megan Wagner was deported out of this country. William Ruto was still a deputy president. And was still a close buddy to former president Uhuru Kenyatta. So some of these things did not happen in dark. And it will have to be avoided. Because Miguna Miguna will want to create a name by creating antagonism with the current president. So that if Ruto wants, and I can tell you, if you dare keep him somewhere close to media, but I think the person of Miguna may not even accept, accept a job offer. It's going to be a little bit delicate for him. And now, even the revolution that uh, he was driving, that revolution was having euphoria and the, 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 the power when he was in Canada because he could really say everything. But now when you're here, the revolution might not be so much into the online space. You might have to organize a fiscal revolution so that people see. What exactly it is. Now, he also blamed Raila that during handshake, Raila abandoned the course and the people who were maimed and killed at, 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 at that time and never fought for them. Now, he's also with government. He's also with William Ruto. So the supporters are also asking, we'll also start asking the same questions. Now, you, you are with government, close to William Ruto. Now, fight for Sando, fight for the other people that who are saying that Raila did not fight for. Because that is what will make him also different. <laughs> Lastly, this is why Miguna is here. International community and the foreign powers that had special interest on president with presidents of William Ruto are here and will use Miguna Miguna to checkmate William Ruto. That's why Miguna is here. Miguna is here. not here on freedom is coming and also. They, because he has international clout, uh, I don't think they have a very good, they are, they are in real order with Rhino Dinga. And because they know that Miguna is now becoming, coming home with a fresh blood and uh, vigor and a lot of interest in him, I can see that the international community will also prefer using Miguna Miguna. And I have seen the photos of... Uh, Human rights defenders. Now, human rights defenders are now coalescing around Miguna. And they will use him as an emblem to fight to checkmate William Ruto. There's human rights violations and the other things. And he might even lead now um, forces against William Ruto. That's my fault. That's my bold analysis. And guys, yes, let's meet somewhere else.